Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. All right, the one o'clock block, Asia in Review. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and we like to think globally. That's, like, that's why we want to talk to Russell Hanma today. He is the author of the APEC Master Plan. Welcome to the show, Russell. Thank you for coming down. Well, thank you, Jay, for inviting me again. Um, you know, this is a good subject. As you know, next week, uh, uh, we're going to be, there's going to be an APEC conference in Portsby, Papua New Guinea. And uh, I know all the leaders are getting together already. It starts up from uh, November 12th through the 18th. And the APEC leaders are going to be getting together from the, on the November 17th and the 18th. And I believe this year our president, Donald Trump, will not be attending. So he's asking uh, our vice president, Mike Pence, to attend. Mm -hmm. And besides the APEC, there's going to be a, a Asian uh, East Asia Summit. And there'll be an ASEAN 6 summit going on as well afterwards. So. Not in the same place. Not in the they, same they place. They have their own venues. Yes, yeah. sir. They have their own little venue. Okay. For those who don't know what APEC is, why don't you tell them, Russell? Well, APEC is, uh, you know, I, I did a few shows in the past uh, with yourself, Jay, you know, when I did come up with my APEC master plan. Uh, uh, if you can Google me, uh, there'll be all the listing of the APEC shows that I did uh, with the Think Tech Hawaii. But APEC is a, a it's, it's called Asia Pacific Economic Corporation, and it involves 21 countries. And as you know, we the first one that we hosted in the United States was in 19. 94 when President Clinton was a uh, Bill Clinton was a president and we had it in Blake's Island in uh, in Washington by Seattle and after that we formulated uh, the following year uh, there was APEC National Center in order to uh, get all our U.S. corporations together, especially our multinational, our, 500, our 50 blue chip corporations are part of our APEC sponsors so they're going to be uh, one of our, uh, with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. So we have a lot of clout in terms of not only for political policy, but in terms of business, how we can penetrate into uh, Asia Pacific mm -hmm. region to do business mm -hmm. for import, export, financial uh, investments as well. well. Great possibilities. So you say 21 countries, and these are Asia Pacific countries all around Asia Pacific, yeah? Yes, basically, and we do have some North American, like in South America, we have Chile, we have Peru, mm -hmm. we have Mexico, mm -hmm. and Canada is a member of APEC. I know a lot of other Latin co countries are looking into want to be part of the uh, Asia Pacific well, region. If you're on the Pacific, you qualify, no? Yeah, it's, it's up to the, uh, the leaders to decide when they have their board meeting or yeah. with the uh, senior uh, But 21 officials. has been the number for quite some time, yeah? Yes, it's been that way. I know that India wants to join in uh, as a uh, 22nd APEC uh, country <laughs> really? right now, because they got a population of almost as uh, equivalent to what China has, uh, really, uh, 1.4 yeah. billion people. And China's so. a member of APEC. Yes, right? they're a member China, of China, Japan, it. Korea, we assume that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Taiwan, is Taiwan a member of APEC? Yes, Taiwan is a matter of fact, Taiwan wants to, uh, Taiwan, Hong Kong, even they're under that one China policy that uh, uh, China is trying to push, but we give them a, a seat with Hong Kong and Taiwan, so mm -hmm. they have a uh, uh, a voice mm -hmm. uh, for uh, so they can be sovereign in certain ways. <laughs> One very interesting aspect of APEC is that um, the venue rotates among the 21. So, right, every year it goes to a different member, um, and and you only get to host it once. Every, you, any given country only gets to host it every 21 years. Am I right? Uh, not necessarily 21 years, but depending on the capability of the. Uh, <laughs> countries if they're willing one to sponsor again and uh, last year it was uh, sponsored in Vietnam mm -hmm. uh, prior to that uh, we did it in Peru mm -hmm. and we did it in Philippines mm -hmm. uh, Indonesia and China hosted as well and mm -hmm. we in Russia as well and in 2011 we hosted in Hawaii I remember that and, well and that, that was really a, a very interesting experience for us mm -hmm. that's and, the time when we're talking about we want to make uh, TPP the trans-pacific partnership as a, a, one of the requirements under the Bogar doctrine where by year 2020 we want to have all Asian uh, Pacific region with the 21 country APEC to have a free trade area mm. in the Asia Pacific region. Mm. So we wanted to use a, a TPP as a driving force. And expand TPP to, to be as big as APEC. No? Yeah, but unfortunately with uh, our current presidents and with the new administration, <clears throat> we withdraw from TPP. So I think 
they're kind of looking at RCEP as a means, but I know that just the, the 11 countries of the TPP members decided to they want to proceed and they ratified it within their uh, without parliament us. without United States being members. So by end of the December 30th, uh, they're going to start implementing the, uh, uh, the new TPP. It's called Comprehensive Progressive uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership. Let's dwell on that for a minute. What's the difference between TPP, I mean, assuming it, it, it was uh, realized as originally contemplated, um, and APEC, um, are, are, they, are they the same kind of organization? What's the difference? Oh, it's a different, it's a different concept of, uh, it's, but you know, they want to use the same kind of platform because the TPP members are part of the APEC members. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but in uh, the trades, in the trade and uh, facilitation, in trade and commerce wise, uh, we, most of the time we go through our, our United States, like in our case, we go through our United States Trade Representative's Office. Any trade agreement we make within uh, different foreign countries, it's under the USTR's uh, uh, requirement, or they justifies the means. And from there, we take it up to our Congress so to TPP, ratify it. Have, it's a treaty. It's, yes, a, it's, it's an international agreement, agreement right. and it's at the level of a treaty. So, TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, that's a, 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 the concept is a trade agreement, yeah? Or, yeah. And so, um, if I have a tariff war going on, I probably, I probably don't want to be part of TPP, no? I, I, because that's inconsistent, isn't it? Well, actually, right now, what's happening with, uh, uh, like, we just finished the NAFTA, they call it the uh, United States, Mexico, and Canada uh, trade agreement. Right. And it's the same kind of format, but that's a multilateral, because not, it's not a bilateral. You're using two, three, or four or more countries. But in TPP case, we have 11 countries. Yeah. If the United States was a member, we have 12 countries. Yeah. It's like they're having the same kind of uh, terms and condition, and they want to work out the bilateral first. So, so if you look at my master plan that I drafted back in 2000. This is uh, a state master plan for APEC? Oh, actually, this is the APEC master plan drafted for, our, uh, for the APEC organization to follow as a guidelines and uh, based on that. And I, in that, uh, in certain uh, segment of the uh, master plan, I, I mentioned about the free trade agreement. And they should all, countries should do a bilateral first, country to country, then there's no misunderstanding of uh, what the terms and condition are. Then from there, they can go into the multilateral, multi yeah. and uh, then you can, they won't be able to supersede certain things, because mm. the bilateral will be a stronghold. And I think maybe that's what uh, Trump is trying to do, is he's trying to strengthen the bilateral side. And uh, from there, eventually, he'll uh, go into the multilateral. And uh, I know that he's interested in rejoining the TPP again after he goes through the bilateral with country to country. Yeah, okay, and so he <laughs> wants to get an advantage on that country, and he can negotiate what he thinks is a better agreement. But right now, we we're in a trade war with a number of countries in Asia, especially China. And uh, the, we're not, we don't have agreements with them. We just have tariffs. Yeah. That's too bad. Um, so, the, so the question really is, um, does, does APEC include this kind of trade agreement? Um, or is APEC involved in different kinds of issues? It's economic. That's part of mm -hmm. its name, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, so what, what is the economic—I <laughs> love this question. What, what is the APEC—what is the economic in APEC? What is it? Well, actually, it's, they're so diversified, you know, it's not only for trade. Trade is one of the issues in terms of import-export, of moving goods and services. And they want to come up with a harmonizing uh, trade and facilitation kind of measure. So I know they have to come up with their uh, regulations of the customs of import regulation, what's considered as tariff and non-tariff so of each import item. export is one. Exactly. And uh, like our case, we have to work with our U.S. customs uh, regulations here with our shipping industry, like uh, what's happening with our, our steamship company or air cargo with IATA. Shipping. So in shipping, we have non-conference and conference carriers. We had like Matson, U.S. President's Line, Mars Line. So these are all major carriers, but they have to know, understand what goods and services that they're going to be, because they'll be the one that's carrying the cargo. Yeah, sure. And uh, with whatever's on the manifest invoice, and they're going to, whenever it comes into a U.S. territory, the U.S. Customs going to look at that invoice on the manifest and see what's considered as 
tariff or non-tariff based on the country of origin of that country. So whatever trade agreements that we make with uh, our USTR's office, uh, the U.S. Customs got to make sure that it's, uh, we're in the same uh, Okay, so scope. APEC is interested in those trade agreements. Exactly. But not the same thing as the TPP. Well, TPP, it's, APEC. It's a multiple, multiple party trade agreement. Um, but APEC is interested in trade agreements in general. Is that yeah, the idea? actually, APEC, like I said before, with the Bogar Doctrine in 1994 in Bogar, Indonesia, that's when all the leaders got together and decided that uh, we need to come up with some kind of free trade area for Asia Pacific region. It's like coming up with a free trade agreement. Yeah. So each country, all those 21 countries should go have some kind of understanding of uh, bringing up the free trade issue with the free trade agreement with those 21 countries. But free trade and tariffs are 180 degrees inconsistent. Exactly. Right? So with worldwide, we're, we might be the only countries that's been having that protectionist kind of movement right now. Before that, with our past uh, administration, we're into the free trade. So uh, doesn't agreements. this undermine APEC in general? I mean, the reality is that they'll have the meeting. Uh, Pence will uh, attend instead of Trump. Um, I mean, uh, usually heads of state do attend these meetings, at least historically, and they did in uh, 2011 when we had it here. Um, but if, if we're at war and we're doing non-free trade type initiatives, um, it doesn't undermine APEC completely? Well, actually, they, they're making a lot of adjustments. They understand what the, uh, our current administration is going through with the bilateral uh, trade agreements, and uh, besides having uh, protection of uh, putting tariffs on it and maybe try to uh, see what kind of uh, uh, squeeze play that we can play. And a good example of what we're trying to do with China right now, we're giving all this kind of tariffs kind of a war, a war, and we want these trade officials to come up to our, and come up with a better deal. So I, they're going to have to negotiate something, so or else what's happening right now, everybody's kind of leaving. China's going to be the big loser on this, because a lot of investments are leaving their country. Now they're trying to look for another uh, uh, physical distribution network of a uh, uh, chain of goods and services going to be in terms of country of origin is changing, shifting. So you see that regional kind of uh, uh, manifest uh, mm -hmm. in terms of trade. <laughs> so if I go to Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea, um, New Guinea last, next week, um, and I sit around and if I look at their program, I sit around and listen to what they're talking about. What am I going to hear? Oh, right now, I think the leaders, you know, in Papua New Guinea, they got their own little problems. I know that last year they had a big hurricane, they had a big storm there, so oh, they right? need to build their infrastructure oh, gee, with Indonesia as well. So, uh, uh, in terms of humanitarian a a effects, uh, another thing, because I'm more of a trade specialist, so in terms of trade and commerce, they are they're trying to harmonize the. Uh, 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 trade and facilitation, like I said, in terms of tariffs, and so that each country has a, which her country has a free trade status. So the country's got to come up with a better uh, financial measures. So even last month they had the finance ministers got together and said how we can <coughs> orchestrate uh, harmonizing the free trade in terms of financing the infrastructure and in terms of trade and commerce. So they, each country's got to come up with their own that are strategic kind of plan. <clears throat> yeah, so we, we, well, will we have, um, uh, could we have a, a product of this, this uh, summit that gives us um, a better deal? When I say us, I mean everybody. Uh, could this help uh, Asia Pacific trade this year? I mean, for example, are there things that would be discussed that might ameliorate the contention over tariffs? Um, is this a place where uh, they can reach agreement on things they have not agreed on before? Oh, definitely. There's a lot of uh, avenues they can look into, you know, in terms of our public infrastructure. Uh, as you know, a few about a month ago, uh, our Secretary of Transportation, because I'm into more transportation, because I used to work for State DOT, and uh, I know a lot about the international transportation measures. So. Uh, uh, our Secretary of Transportation, Ellen <coughs> Chang, mentioned that, you know, we are looking into the infrastructure projects uh, nationwide. And uh, these, so in other words, if you want these, in terms of bilateral agreement, if China wants to help our economy in terms of infrastructure, they need to invest 
into our U.S. soil, our engineering projects, our, you know, in terms of roadway, in terms of public transportation, you know, they got to be part. If they want to be a, a player, and they got to be willing to be learning our ways of doing business in the U.S. Mm, soil, because mm, mm. we always go to their countries, and we did it according to their rules, and now it's their turn to come to our country to well, obey our that's rules. That's another point of contention, <laughs> isn't it? Is Xi Jinping going to yeah. show up uh, at APEC? And, oh, I'm and, sure uh, there, he'll be there. Well, I'm sure he's the uh, other leaders going to be there because they got more stake now, and uh, even the ASEAN countries. Uh, because of the trade war with the U.S., China, the ASEAN countries are benefiting. And because uh, some of these trades, in terms of labor and manufacturing, they're mm -hmm. going to be shifting to those ASEAN countries. So it becomes more important than it was before. Mm -hmm. yeah. So why isn't Trump going? Uh, I mean, is he, is he busy doing his agenda in the White House uh, press briefing room or what? Uh, uh, because, you know, it seems to me that he's the businessman between him and Pence, and uh, it would serve the national interest more if we had the president there, like other chiefs of state uh, who customarily go to APEC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, last year when we when Vietnam was hosting, uh, he, he attended the Vietnam summit. So I know that the president is kind of uh, looking at maybe the Papua New Guinea because of the situation right now with the trade war with China. Maybe. He, he doesn't want to get scrutinized, so maybe uh, uh, in terms of protocol, uh, Mike President, our Vice President Mike Pence might be a better uh, individual to go there. But plus, he's pretty diversified and he's very knowledgeable internationally with foreign policy. So, I think uh, we have a good representation with uh, our Vice President Mike Pence there. And, me, and our Secretary of State, uh, Mike Pompe, is going to be in there in oh, our USTR's oh, office. Yeah, there, okay. uh, USTR's office. Well, I uh, hope they make some progress uh, and I hope they ameliorate some of the contention. Uh, but let's shift for a minute to Hawaii, okay? Uh, you're a Hawaii person. Um, you were here when you wrote the APEC Master Plan. Uh, you, you certainly participated in the 2011 APEC uh, Summit here that took place. Um, and you're following it closely, as closely as anybody I know, year to year, summit to summit. Um, but I don't hear it from a lot of people. I don't see it reported in the press. Uh, even in international organizations, it doesn't seem to be discussed. Now, people have said for years and years, for generations and many decades, that Hawaii should be the bridge to Asia. Hawaii should be the Switzerland of the Pacific. Hawaii should be connected to both sides mm -hmm. of the equation. Um, shouldn't we be doing more, Russell? Don't you think that Hawaii has to do more to achieve its destiny? as the center, business center of the Pacific, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it's uh, in terms of uh, education, re realization of uh, our leaders here locally. I've been bringing this up to our legislature, our, uh, our, our young leaders that's coming up in our political uh, standings here, and even with the Chamber of Commerce, with the young uh, business leaders that we need to get more internationalized, even with our, our media, our reporters. A lot of them are my Facebook friends, and uh, I, I gave them a lot of our, my correspondence to our major networks here and let them realize what's happening globally or in terms of Asia-Pacific region. So I noticed a lot of these reporters are getting more Akamai here, and they're realizing what's happening internationally. So I'm kind of pleased that some of the reporting of the news that they're being, there's a lot of more uh, international news in Hawaii. I wish, I wish that were happening, but you know, <clears throat> if I look at what's offered on television, for example, which is a way a lot of people, if not most people, get their news these days, I see the Trump show um, every day, every day, and during the morning, evening, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and night. Um, and I say to myself, that kind of thing is really not constructive for the country. We should be thinking of more constructive things to talk about. We should be reporting, reporting issues and initiatives that are, you know, more constructive for the future of the country economically and otherwise, but we don't seem to do that. And so what, what I get is that we could talk about this. We could continue that education. We could, you know, raise awareness and consciousness in the legislature, in the executive, and among the public mm -hmm. uh, about how important it is for Hawaii to participate in this. But, but we instead— you know, we, we follow the um, the action, so to speak, in in Washington with mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. Uh, this administration, and I'm sad about that. 
Um, are you sad about that? Yeah, I think in terms of bureaucracy, I know that we don't really practice our freedom of uh, uh, the press here in terms of our, our freedom of expression. Uh, I noticed that uh, we need to do that more. We need to get more liberal people to, on the shows to express what's happening locally and with our community. And I think even yourself, Jay, I know that you know with the Think Tank Hawaii show, yeah, it's grown so much and we have so much Akamai people here with us specializing and we're so diversified here with uh, you know just the wealth of knowledge that we have in Hawaii so that's a start already we have that and they, they can gloom the young people and have that wisdom and be more vocal and have that voice I hope so yeah. so <clears throat> I, I ask you um, this if, if you were governor um, and Governor Ige is the governor but if you were governor if you were him what would you do to raise awareness and to get Hawaii connected to APEC, to Asia Pacific business, trade and business, and you know, be part of the Asia Pacific community uh, in, a, in a global sense, be a part. What would you do as governor? I think if he was the governor, I guess the, the governor Ige realized that he's kind of getting more uh, internationally and in understanding the foreign policy of that affects Hawaii. Maybe he can start attending a lot of these international conferences, and maybe you know himself Very good. can go to Very APEC good. and yeah. start up the, even the PBEC Pacific Economic uh, uh, Cooperation or Council uh, they had that we used to host it here a few years well, ago. What's that acronym? Uh, PBEC. Mm -hmm. Remember Pacific Business uh, Economic Council, mm -hmm. and uh, we hosted here. We got out of the business side, not only the PBEC but with APEC as well. With, we have so many uh, avenues, even with the Hawaii Chamber of Commerce and the Ethnic Quad Chamber of Commerce that uh, we have here. Uh, we can try to, but the governors, you know, maybe in terms of uh, having a place like a gathering place, I proposed this in the past with the state legislature that uh, we should have a world class world trade center. And within that World Trade Center, we should designate that as a Asia Pacific a free trade area, meeting the Bogart Doctrine. That's why I was pushing for that. Uh, my scheme was, uh, my strategic plan was making the TPP headquarters and have that in the World Trade Center in Hawaii. So all the trade businesses from Asia Pacific can have a gathering place and they can come here and discuss about the trade issues, what goods and service that can be. We can use the import, export, the trade facilitation, our shipping as well, with our, our ocean and air cargo. And uh, any business that's generated in the Hawaii is under our American law with openness, with due diligence, and transparency that we can use our American law here and uh, keep things more fairness. And uh, that was my vision. And, uh, Has it changed? <laughs> Is that your, still your vision today, Russell? Well, I, I, you know, it's just that matter of uh, we want to push for the World Trade Center and, have, and designate Hawaii as a free trade area for Asia Pacific region. And we can apply the Foreign Trade Zone and then the State Enterprise uh, Act, you know, in terms of you don't pay the capital gains tax for uh, federal side doing business in Hawaii and the state level we have a state enterprise act you know, yeah, so yeah, it kind yeah. of works out to incentivize ways. and provide uh, yeah. uh, incentives of, of various kinds for exactly, trade. Exactly, you know? exactly. So, um, okay, the last area I wanted to ask you about is, uh, you know, it's public awareness. Because I think if you walk down the street and uh, here on Bishop Street or on Fort Street Mall and you ask 10 people what APEC was, they wouldn't know what it was. I'm really sorry about that, too. Mm -hmm. You must be sorry about well, that. Well, they think it might be some kind of cocktail or something. Huh? Yeah, tell that in New York City and a New Yorker. So what is a, oh, it must be a cocktail drink. <laughs> Been in the East Coast. <laughs> so I, I'd like you to talk to the high school kids, okay? And maybe we can include some college kids at UH, whatnot, HPU. Mm -hmm. There's camera one. What would you tell them, Russell, about their duty as, uh, you know, incipient citizens of this state and the business community in the state, concerned about the future of the state economically, what would you tell them they need to do? And you can include travel, mm -hmm. I mean, going places, but oh, yeah. what would you, there's camera one right there. Yeah, actually, it's a good example is like uh, the students can uh, do the student exchange program, uh, even with the Asian Pacific Council that we have here. Uh, each high school has that kind of chapter. Uh, they, they should start up some kind of uh, uh, Asia Pacific Council there, and you know, have these uh, and work with the other high schools that wants to do a student exchange program, take field trips and understanding. And uh, I think the curriculum has got to change too. I think the Department of Education can 
uh, in terms of social studies. Uh, they can include an international uh, uh, Asia Pacific region as one of the histories, and, yeah. and as well with European history. But uh, and I think that's a start. It's just just the awareness of uh, getting the students to realize. And I think already with the tourism that we have here, I know that a lot of the students, young ones, they realize that there's so many Asians that live here in Hawaii. So that's a start. Yeah. <laughs> but what about trade? Um, you know, Hawaii is uh, at best a, a sort of drop shipment place for trade. <clears throat> and um, you know uh, we, we we don't we, the real big trade is going to be between Asia and the, and the West Coast or Canada or South America, not necessarily with Hawaii. So how does one of these students get involved uh, in a business? How can one of these students become expert in trade, import, export, what have you, in participating in the very trade that APEC is about and that TPP would be about? I tell them that too. Well, I think it's just of. Uh it's not for everybody. I think uh, it's going to be for people that's going to be, uh, might be beneficial is that they got to have shown the interest of that country. If you're willing to learn about their culture, language, uh, and, you know, the ones that's already bilingual in terms of a culture or understanding, they might have the competitive edge already. But in terms of uh, Hawaii students, uh, we need to get more exposure on that. And I think it's happening right now. Uh, even our, our university system, like the UH, is, uh, we're getting so many uh, uh, international students there. So I think the local students can mingle with them and try to you know, become good friends and work out. You know. Learn the language. Yeah, learn the language is a learn big Learn the thing. culture. Mm -hmm. Become experts. This ought to be a state of experts in Asia. Yeah, I think you wait another, you know, 20, 30 years, the next generation of kids are like our grandchildren's kids. I think a lot of it, we're going to see more international uh, uh, people living in Hawaii that can bridge the gap with the mm -hmm. Asia Pacific mm -hmm. country. And, you know, what's good for Hawaii. That's Russell what I'm Hanma, hoping for. Russell Hanma, author of the APEC Master Plan, uh, here on Asia in Review, talking about the APEC conference in Fort Moresby just starting on Monday. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs>